Hi. So three more to go and now we will look into Universal Audio Luna. How to work with presets and browser library for workflow techniques over there. So let's get going with Universal Audio Luna and see how it is done over there. Okay, let's um, look into Universal Audio Luna. With Luna, what you can do currently is, of course, you can um, uh, work with your library. You can search easily from there. You can save presets. What you cannot do at this stage is to have track presets. However, you could do a template and uh, we will later look, look on that, how to create templates uh, on each and every digital audio workstations we have been uh, covering. But now let's open a um, our kind of a shell project, uh, your door, and and see how you can work with the library. I have also um, now I'm also displaying a MetaGrid, which is a um, a third-party uh, software that I downloaded and um, and, and I, I've been using it. I've been modifying the template that came along with MetaGrid for Luna. And I have done some add-ons into it, so it makes recalling certain favorite plugins quite easy. And um, I, I'll I'll show how. Anyway, um, we can uh, start with uh, instruments, and uh, for that we could basically add an instrument channel. And once we have an instrument channel added, there is a there is a placeholder for instrument from where you can go and search things. You could actually, of course, browse things, but then you could also have like um, search and um, like, let's do so. Let's search for a contact. You could make this as your favorite. No, you could make this as your favorite as well. So when you go and, and search for favorites, then that would actually appear on top instead of like um, the, the, the lengthy list. However, the search is quite capable, like it, it like in in Pro Tools or or uh, in uh, in Studio One or in um, Ableton Live. But anyway, let's look on the presets first. So um, we have now here an instrument, and uh, be there you can have basically when you click over here, you see that there are no presets currently saved for this instrument. Um, and um, we can go and create few. So, for example, you could go and um, we could go and take the, the usual suspect uh, analog strings and add that as a preset for contact. So um, let's go here and um, let's go here and say save. And uh, now we have saved our first preset for contact, which is analog strings. Then we could go back to library and bring in an analog brass. And do the same thing for this one so that we say that, you know, we will we'll, um, save this. analog brass and uh, strings, uh, sorry, not strings, winds. So now I have two presets and then uh, of course when I click over here in, in this area I can go into presets and, uh, and, and then double clicking in a presets it will basically load me uh, the, the settings for it. As you can see. We could add just an example, another one. Then again, of course, I could make this as as, as my favorite. So um, maybe Alicia's keys would be my favorite piano. So um, I first I need to, of course, upload it and then save it. And uh, and then I could also favorite. So now when I click on favorites, I only see that one and not nothing else. And uh, and then of course this is then how I can move between uh, between these different um, settings and and uh, predefined uh, instruments.
and uh, I don't need to go to contact browser to recall them. So that the, I could basically do this for all of my kind of favorite uh, instruments that I very frequently use to kind of have them uh, as, as presets to my instrument. So it quickly kind of goes and loads those things into into the into the into your project. Additionally, of course, you can go into inserts and um, let's maybe try to find a plugin that I might not have a thumbnail for it. Okay, here is a good example on the Tal Chorus. Uh, so uh, when you don't have a thumbnail for it, you, you basically see this icon, but then you can go over here and say that create a plugin icon. And oh, that's interesting. Uh, and now, now it created the plugin icon for you. And, um, and so now it's also visually, you can kind of realize that what plugin you have there and not only from the name. Same here is that you can actually have the, the presets. Uh, let's have a, uh, uh, a plugin that already has pre-made, uh, a third party plugin that has already remade uh, presets like uh, from soft to like the Harmonix analog saturation. Uh, uh, so now when I go over here, I see all the all the factory presets for these instruments over here but then also if i tweak them a bit or um, i change them a bit based on what what is uh, originally provided from the factory for this preset i could still go and save this as as my my preset as well uh, with maybe an abbreviation with my initials um, so now i when i go on top i see that i have the user presets here like my own on top but then I could also, of course, make one as my favorite. So if I click favorite, I see that, you know, uh, JC's bass guitar is, is, is um, I can quickly access that that preset if I, I, I need to. Or then I can bring in my own. So this is actually how you work with presets in, in, the, in, in Luna. A bonus for, for Luna, I guess, is that um, when I created the, uh, the, the kind of a template for I created the template for um, for Metagrid there now if I would like to or if I would like to recall any of these plugins I just basically what, what I can to I, I haven't found at least that there is a there is a keyboard shortcut for me to select this slot in in Luna but I can go over here when I click plus sign and I press like Pro Q. It will automatically then go and get Pro Q for my for me. I don't need to type anything. I just need to press the plus sign and then from the iPad to select the, you know what plugin I would like to bring in. So like for example iHeartRadio. So um, so so this is basically that. And let's like do another example like uh, BX solo so um, let's add an, a plugin icon for that that's a quite new uh, plugin for me but anyway this is how it works and um, and uh, with with the metagrid so you basically click the plus sign and then from the iPad you select that you know what you need to bring in like um, pure plate or 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 whatever so um, so yeah that is that is basically how it how it works so um, it's quite convenient to to kind of use and 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 bring bring uh, plugins into your project um, whatever they might be of course I created my favorite list that the kind of the ones that I mostly use so I can easily and quickly pull them but it doesn't mean that um, that I need to uh, or I don't need to kind of uh, type them from the keyboard or 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 whatever Okay, so um, I think that's basically from the Luna perspective. We will later on look on the templates and how to work with templates in Luna. But now we just focused on presets and library and how to work with the library. So um, as, um, as Luna is quite straightforward, these are the options that you can do. So you can have an instrument presets. As we looked at it, you can search the instruments and the, the uh, the the plugins from from the from the library 
you can create these plugin thumbnails for those to be more visual in your uh, in your mixer and um, and and of course you can uh, recall presets and create your own for the for the effects as well but that's pretty much it what you have uh, in in luna at this stage um so um it's a extremely good start but um they have certain areas where they of course need to be catch up still and uh, and uh, and and so so we will see how how that will progress going forward so so that was luna and how to use presets and library for workflow techniques Next, we will dive into Cubase and uh, we have two more to go. So Cubase and Reason. So stay tuned. Remember to subscribe for the channel. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye now.